This is a TV show called Flashpoint. If you're unfamiliar, it's on Kenneth Copeland's Victory Channel, like Oxygen or E or Cartoon Network or whatever. Kenneth Copeland o owns this TV show and the network that it plays on. And this TV show is absolutely insane for Donald Trump. Insane for him. Do anything for the guy. It's crazy. Anyway, they got a bunch of people on to talk about how kids are being groomed. You know how they do. Uh, they're convinced that... Like, kids are being turned trans intentionally by a cabal or whatever other thing. And that's what they're talking about right now. It's nuts. So I want to listen to what they have to say. And while we do, we're going to play some um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There will not be any big spoilers or anything. I'm just kind of running around doing whatever. Also, this is not part one. So if you didn't see the other, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll provide context if it's missing. All right, let's give this a listen. Again, it is a mass medicalization of turning them into long-term, lifelong patients. All right, well... I don't even know what that means, no. Well, uh, you did lay out what I so appreciate is you laid out the path. Uh, I have two questions. Number one, where can you go back to in history? When did this big aversion to, uh, to our children, when did it happen? When did it start and how did it... It didn't. This doesn't exist. This is fabricated. Start. If you really want to dig deep, it, it started before any of us were alive because, you know. Oh, my God, dude, get help. Uh, communism existed in some form even before Karl Marx, just by different names. And the reality of how it comes to be is through chaos. And that chaos is created. And it's always created and organized in very specific ways and uh, separate. He's accurate to say that um, chaos and genocide and things like that are organized and created in very specific ways. That is correct. But he's seemingly like sitting here like pretending that communism is like setting out to like take advantage of people or whatever. And, and they're like planning to take kids or whatever other thing. Like what the hell is happening right now? Separating the child from their parent is paramount to being able to inject one of these authoritarian ideologies that is destructive to values, to faith, to really goodness as a whole. Just completely fabricated nonsense. And it's the only way to boost evil up. So, you know, what we're seeing now is just a modern version of it where they've realized that the, the best path to separating these kids from their parents and replacing it with the state is issues kids don't want to talk to their parents about. So that's why so much of it is centered around gender ideology, sexual proclivities, you know, and, and what they call... Right, sexual proclivities? Does that mean, like... Being gay? Is that what he's talking about? Sexual proclivities or being gay? Kinks, because they know that kids would never talk about these subjects with their parents out of their own free will. Very rarely, you know, so I mean. Well, no, I mean, my kid has talked about this stuff. I mean, honestly, I would prefer not to hear about this stuff from my kid. I don't want to hear about my kid's sexuality, like my daughter's sexuality. Although I know there's something going on there. I know that it exists. So I just... Put headphones in and turn around and pay attention to something different. And my kid talks to, like, my wife about stuff. I mean, just general stuff, you know, like um, questions about, like, condoms and things like that. Kids do talk to parents about this stuff. And the fact that he doesn't seem to, like, realize that is absolutely wild to me. The fact that he, he seems to think that kids just have nothing to do with any of this stuff. They don't talk to their parents about this stuff or anything like that. That just like that straight up blows me away. That speaks volumes about who he is as a person. Right. And the ideals and beliefs that he holds and the things that he does speaks volumes about it. This dude is an embarrassment. And this is honestly sad. I mean, I think everybody can understand when you were a teenager, it was uncomfortable. You didn't really want to talk about that with your parents. But, you know, Sure. Yeah. I mean, it can be. It depends. If you have that kind of relationship with your parents where you're comfortable talking to them about anything, which is a good thing, you should be in the type of situation where you feel you can talk to your parents about whatever. That should be the case. If you feel you can talk to them about anything, then you, then you won't find yourself in this ass backwards situation that he's describing right now um instead of the parents being the ones to have that conversation with their kids even if it is uncomfortable now it's a teacher or somebody who's involved with the state and it well, you know somebody who's involved with the state sometimes 
it's easier to have the conversations about identity and stuff when the person is not judgmental or not going to question you. They're just going to give you flat, straight information. Sometimes that's what a kid needs from time to time. And when I say kid, I'm talking 15 year old. This dude and all these other people, they don't seem to understand that kids have different ideas and beliefs and feelings on stuff than their parents do. That's just what it is. Blows me away. He doesn't recognize that. And it's them saying, hey, we'll keep this secret from your parents. We're the we're the cool person you can trust with these secrets. And then they're teaching them really hedonistic values. And so the separation begins there and it only grows from there because now you've got the state in a position where the child trusts them over their parents and is keeping secrets from their parents with the state. Oh, my God. Keeping secrets from their parents with the state as if, first of all, you know, asking questions and having those questions answered by a teacher, that's what teachers are there for, to answer questions. That's why they're there first. And second, kids keep secrets. Are you kidding? This is part of the deal. If you don't want your kid to keep secrets, don't be a shithead to the kid and make them feel like they're being judged. Don't make your kid feel afraid or, or feel like uh, they're, you know, they're doing something wrong or that they shouldn't be asking this question or whatever. Don't do that if you don't want your kid to look elsewhere for answers. This dude's a joke. This is sad. This is sad for every one of these conservative people's children, honestly. And so that's the beginning of the end. And, and this right. is where we're at. So parents need to decide what we're going to do. And I hope everybody chooses to take action in their local community to do everything they can to protect our kids. All right. This is just not a problem. Like, this is a fabricated issue that only exists in these people's heads. We one more question before I go around the horn with everybody to weigh in here. Uh, let's talk. Go around the horn with everybody? Okay. Talk about the whole social media aspect because that was highlighted as well in the uh, the portion of the trailer we played. Uh, TikTok seems to be at the center of a lot of the issues. It does. I mean, I mean, TikTok doesn't seem to be at the center of a lot of the issues that they're portraying because A, those issues don't exist. Okay, this is fake. This is not a problem that exists. I refuse to even acknowledge that there is a problem. I refuse to accept that there is a problem. There isn't. There is no problem that exists anywhere except these people's heads. That's it. Get help. It does. I mean, it, this is the question I have for every parent watching. Okay, I'm a parent. That's me. Oh, by the way, I totally beat this guy. I beat this guy into the ground on this game. Wow, did I beat him hard. That's awesome. If China contacted you tomorrow and they said, hey, can we send a soldier to come and indoctrinate your child for a couple hours a day after school, would you be okay with that? No, no, I would not be okay with that. Every parent watching would think it's absurd. They would definitely not do it. How yeah, absolutely. However, we have a ton of parents, including in the Christian church, who are handing a phone with TikTok to their child and letting them go and, and cruise the app. And in many cases, they even think that they're doing some kind of parental control without understanding that their child knows a vast amount about technology that they don't and can get. Okay, let me, let me say this. This is um, a complicated situation that I, I feel it's necessary to talk about right now. Um, dude, I just took this guy's card. I love it. I love everything about it. Dude, I am just ruining this guy. I am wrecking him so hard. Oh, it's fantastic. Anyway, the thing is, this isn't happening. What he's describing here, this whole TikTok is, you know, run by China or whatever. There was a period of time where I could agree tentatively that I think that China was kind of controlling and censoring TikTok to some degree. But at this point, in my opinion, I believe that... China is very hands off with TikTok, though the, I, I do think that they hold a controlling stake in TikTok. In fact, they do hold a controlling stake in TikTok. But I think it's useful to get data. It's been useful for data over anything else. I believe that China is probably pulling data from, from TikTok. Uh, now, if this guy wants to like live in this, you know, gigantic, like this fantasy land where he's, uh, where 
every kid in America is being victimized by China or whatever, or by communism or whatever the hell. Okay, you can live in that fantasy land if you want, but it doesn't make it any more real. Like, come back to reality with the rest of us, man. I'm, I'm begging you, please. Oh, yeah, I just beat the hell out of this guy. This, this was a slaughter. The reason I say that there was a point in time when TikTok was controlled by China to some degree is because any mention of Tiananmen Square was censored or any mention of Uyghur Muslims was censored. It was like those videos were taken down. And that's something that nobody outside of the Chinese government cares about. Why would a U.S. company censor Tiananmen Square? China was called out for that. And it was like made obvious that they, you know, that they were involved to some degree. And the Chinese government owned or owns, I'm not sure which, a company which has um, a 1% controlling stake in TikTok or whatever. That's how China gets it hooks into companies. It is a dictatorship. I don't forget that. China is a dictatorship. It, it's run by a dictator, a bad guy who wants to control everything. I mean, I don't want to downplay that fact. I want everybody to understand that very clearly. But I don't believe that China is controlling anything right now. So, sorry. Uh, I, I simply reject that. You're going to have to give me a little bit of evidence right now. They're not coming with anything more than just getting data at absolute worst. And I don't even really have any evidence for that one. For the record, um, TikTok was caught capturing data that it was not entitled to that it didn't have permission to take off of phones a while back so tiktok you know it is kind of malwarey or it has been in the past it's been caught doing things that it shouldn't be doing um it, you know like i said china is a dictatorship and, and they do questionable things so just use with caution but they're not manipulating children the the problem is that these people are taking a grain of truth and stretching it just a little bit, just like with the original, you know, in the 1950s, the, the KKK going into that town who had their first black family move in. They went around to the schools and told the elementary children that before they know it, integration includes forcing people to marry black people, white people to marry black people. That's part of the deal. Um, the people are definitely against integration. And they have told my children that they have to marry. The point is that this has always been the strategy. And here we sit, once again, listening to the far right fear monger about something and stretch it just a little, just a little bit. Does China control TikTok? Probably to some degree, I think a little bit. It is a dictatorship. But are they like grooming children to be trans and all this other stuff? No, I, I don't even think they control TikTok enough to even be able to do that truthfully if they wanted to. Like, this is all just fabricated, fear-mongering nonsense, all of it. Pass those blocks very easily, and we cover that in the film as well. But TikTok is essentially indoctrinating these kids and using algorithms that will be destructive to the West. I mean, it's completely... Uh, he doesn't have any reason to believe that. He has no evidence of this whatsoever. Um, and he's conflating all kinds of stuff on top of all kinds of stuff to turn it into something that it's not. He's taking a grain of truth and, you know, building it up into this big ridiculous thing. We are their enemy, make no mistake about it, and China will do everything they can to subvert the strength of our country and our values. And so um, there's a reason why in their country, and we cover this as well, in their country, their version of TikTok does not allow kids to view the type of degeneracy that is boosted in the out. Oh, my God. Well, it's interesting that he mentions this. It's true that the TikTok version in China is very focused on good deeds and, um, you know, building trust between people and creating communities and things like that. That's true. But I don't believe that China is like m altering the algorithm or modifying it to hurt people or whatever. I think that's just 
made up nonsense algorithm here so you can't even watch anything like these videos if you're a child or teenager in china you're only able to watch educational science-based you know productive things for your brain and i guess he wants that here right like kids shouldn't be able to relax and just learn their own thing and do their own thing and have fun people shouldn't be allowed to it should only ever be educational productive things and if it's not it shouldn't be available to anybody else i guess is he saying he wants us to be more like china that's what it sounds like here that's not the case they hide that content and they boost sexual content and content that you know really glorifies crime and hedonistic behaviors and that's that's the reality so i really uh, no, it's not the reality. This is like fabricated. I really urge people to go to the war on children dot com and watch the film. Yeah, all right. Oh my God, dude! All right, let me go to Colonel Lieutenant Colonel Allen West, um, sir. You know what Robbie was describing? I was thinking of, you know, decades ago. You know, the images of planes flying over and dropping propaganda leaflets everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, is that what? That did happen a long time ago. I mean, I, I'm not sure what specific event he's talking about, but what TikTok is doing to our to our nation? No, he thinks that TikTok is basically the equivalent of dropping propaganda leaflets, like in a in wartime or whatever. Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we used to call. And, and who the hell is this guy? All that information operations and psyops but you know you asked robbie a question that you know how far back do you have to go to see when this war on children really started well go back to judges chapter 2 verses 10 through 18 when it talks about the children of israel fell down and start to worship the baals and one of the gods of the baals was the god moloch the god of child sacrifice oh my god dude these people is this really all you have to do with your life just make shit up and, and talk about like the god of what he, like um the god of a child sacrifice or whatever come on man please get a life and and stop just making shit up right off the top of your head like this and then you can advance it as robbie talked about to the modern day socialist communist uh, mentality and you can see and read the writings of lenin stalin hitler chairman mao i mean the left has always been targeting our children and now today what did you see see happening in the united states of america you hear joe biden his wife uh, kamala harris and the white house spokesperson saying that your children are not your own and this has already started Wait, who said that and when? I don't remember Joe Biden and or his family or administration or whatever ever saying your children are not your own. What are you talking about right now? This is insane. Get help, people, for real. In several states in the United States of America, if you don't affirm your child's gender, uh, you can lose your child. And most recently, we just had a case in India. Wait, when? Where? Which state? Who said... If you don't affirm your child's gender, then you lose your child to CPS. Who said that? Who told you that? Tell me which state that this is happening in. It's complete nonsensical garbage. All of it. Deanna about that. So we are seeing, you know, the government coming in and disrupting the relationship between the parent. And it says in Proverbs 22, 6, that you're supposed to train up a child in the way that they should go so that when they grow, they shall not. The government's not coming in and doing anything. Like, what are you even talking about right now? It's completely made up nonsense. My God, these people just like they don't they don't even live in reality, do they? They live in like another world that doesn't that's not like represented by reality at all we don't have the same view of reality as each other do we the thing is like half of the people who are on here saying all this stuff no they're full of shit and the other half believe everything they're saying they buy it hook line and sinker they eat it all up and it's you you know it's nearly impossible to tell which one is which does this believe or does this guy believe what he's saying? Like actually believe it? Or is he just propagandizing? LTC Allen West. I've never heard of LTC. Is that a title? Lieutenant is that Lieutenant Colonel? It is. It's Lieutenant Colonel. Apparently, what? Is this guy in the military? Was he in the military? Who is Allen West? Oh, he's a politician. And he was apparently a lieutenant colonel at one point. Now he's a Republican, retired military officer, member of the Republican Party. Uh, West represented Florida's 40, I'm sorry, Florida's 
22nd congressional district in the U.S. House of Representatives. So he was a state House member from 2011 to 2013. And he served as the chairman of the Republican Party of Texas from 2020 to 2021. Okay. So he was a lieutenant colonel who's been involved in politics. Got it. Depart from it, not the government. Yeah, that's so true. Let me bring in you. No, it's not. Like, this whole thing is made up, all of it. It's not so true. John Graves uh, to the conversation. You know, this is, uh, and, and Lieutenant Colonel Allen West went exactly where I was wanting to go. This has always been the battle. We just haven't always been aware of the tactics of the warfare or the psyops. As, yeah. uh, it has not always been the battle. Get help. Colonel West was saying, now, John, I mean, this is uh, this is something we've got to we must overcome. We must take this seriously. And uh, as parents, whether Christian or not, uh, like Robbie was talking about, we've let we've let uh, we've given a phone to kids to, as a babysitter instead of watching because we didn't know what was on there. Yeah, and I, I think I, I, I'm grateful that Robbie's done this movie, and I'm, I, I didn't know about it. I'm going to go watch it. So thank you for letting all of us know, because part of the issue here is education. And, and I, it, this is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. I, I'm glad uh, bail was talked about by uh, Colonel West. You can go. Glad bail was talked about by Lieutenant West. My God, dude, get help all the way back to Canaan in the land that God promised them the Canaanites also sacrificed their children so this is as old as history wait the Canaanites sacrificed their children I'm sorry what are you talking about now what's all this Canaanites sacrificed their children is that even real or do you just like make that up I'm not sure I don't know see it, it's very possible this is real it's just like you can't trust a word out of their mouths you got to look everything up in the region of the Levant, there were there was religion in the area where people did sacrifice children. There were gods to whom children were sacrificed. Regarding the Canaanites, they probably did sacrifice. I mean, some at least. I'm just reading here. Uh, there were sacred burial places found in the in Phoenician sites named after the biblical Tophet near Jerusalem, where the Judeans practiced child sacrifice. So it sounds like everybody in that region was doing child sacrifice, or many people, not just Canaanites, but Jews also. Uh, they, they, like, they coexisted with each other in the region. So, yeah. This guy is just fear-mongering and blaming people for things that they're not like responsible for making ridiculous claims about it. I mean, it's just insane. Why? Because it's Satan, it's demonic, it's darkness, it's evil. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. And so our job is we're not ignorant of his devices. They just kill in a new way. They kill people mentally with mental health issues. They're killing them with destroying the, the way their body is made and thinking they're not made in the image of God. And the Wait, they're killing them with mental health issues? People are giving children mental health issues? Outside of these people, of course. They were born wrong. They're destroying them with other emotional issues, with technology. So, you know, they're not throwing them off of a cliff and, you know, singing a song and dancing around a fire like they were thousands of years ago. But it's the same death. It's the same destruction. And so we are told in the scriptures, you're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. So I love that you're educating the, the people out there. And I would encourage everybody to go watch it and everybody to go share this. We My God, dude, this video is insane. We don't have to lose hope. We don't have to right. say, oh, wring our hands. Everything's terrible. No, we're going to win this. What did they do when God gave them the promise? land, they had to get those kind of people out of there. We need that kind of spirit out of our schools, out of our technology. Out <laughs> wow. Uh, did you catch what he just said? I mean, it may have slipped right by. Let me, let me write this one down. We'll, we'll play it again. Now, listen, listen uh, again, listen closely to what he says here. He's talking, he's comparing America, I guess, the United States. He's comparing the U.S. to Israel and the Canaanites, right? Terrible. No, we're going to win this. What did they do when God gave them the promised land? They had to get those kind of people out of there. We need that kind of spirit out of our schools, out of our technology. Out did you catch it that time? He said, what did God do when he gave Israel to the Jews? He got those other people out of there. 
And w- what happened to those other people? What happened to the Canaanites? They were genocided. They were killed. How did God, quote unquote, get those people out? He killed them. That's the kind of language. I mean, it's veiled. It's, you know, not like direct and out in the open and clear and concise. But ultimately, that's, you know, it's pretty obvious. It's obvious to everybody what he's talking about. Anybody who's a Christian who's read the Bible or knows the stories or whatever, they know what he's trying to communicate. And everybody to go share this. We don't have to lose hope. We don't have to right. say, oh, wring our hands. Everything's terrible. No, we're going to win this. What did they do when God gave them the promised land? They had to get those kind of people out of there. We need that kind of spirit out of our schools. Out. That's disturbing, dude. Of our technology, out of our government, because it's killing and destroying our own. And, and there's lots and lots of people that are waking up. There's lots of movements going on. We just need them to use their voice in a protected way to protect these kids and do some good and get those Canaanites out of the land. Wow, so good. All right, let me go back. Wow, so good. Before I go back to Robbie, uh, Colonel West, I want to ask you this question again. Um, why is it that the left or the liberal is so aggressive in supporting this type of behavior? Why? Why is the liberal so aggressive in not so, or in supporting this type of behavior? Because it doesn't make sense. I mean, nobody. All right, let me just say this clearly again. I don't know which part I'm in. You know, people may have missed what I said before, so let me say it one more time. I do not believe that children should be intentionally, surreptitiously, specifically groomed for sexual behavior at a young age. That's what these people are saying. That's what Gene Bailey is claiming the left stands for. I don't believe in that. I think that's wrong. That's bad. I don't want to see any of that. I want to stop it if it's happening. But therein lies the problem. That's not happening. That's fake. It's made up by these people. Get help. You know, the fact that they came up with this uh, this idea, this belief, or that this like view in the first place is disturbing. It's like, is your mind really so depraved that you would even think of doing something like this or that you would even suspect somebody doing something like this of on a mass scale grooming children and, and into like sexual behavior or whatever? Are you really that depraved that you came up with this? Like, my God, dude. Why are they so aggressive well, in that? Well, it does make sense. If you understand their mentality, if you understand and, and read Saul Alinsky, the, the Communist Manifesto, whatever, the, the most important aspect, the most foundational aspect of a society is the family. And if they can come in and disrupt and destroy the family, then they get that opportunity to have more and more control over you. It's not just the fact that, you know, they want to control what type of, uh, you know, stove you have in, in your home. They want Nobody's trying to, cre- uh, to control anybody's stove. This is just fabricated nonsense once again. You know where this one came from? This one is from, uh, it was some government agency released a report that basically said the fumes from gas stoves are really bad for you. It's basically like having a smoker in your house if you have a gas stove. And induction stoves are better anyway. So they recommended... The, this government agency, whoever the hell it was, I don't remember now, the FCC, or I don't have any clue. The government agency recommended people switching from gas to induction or whatever. And these people that we're listening to here, Lieutenant Colonel Allen West or whatever, and all of these others, just became like obsessed with the idea that the government is trying to force us to use um induction stoves or or to not use gas stoves why aren't we allowed to use gas stoves got me it's fake like this whole thing is fake they're fabricating a problem that does not exist because it's useful to them they want to scare the bejesus out of everybody if they can and it seems to be working for some people for a lot of people sadly want to be able to control every aspect of your family and to include every aspect of the body as well. To, like nobody's trying to do that. You know, health care and, and, and now, you know. Oh, through health care. Okay, yeah. 
they, some ambiguous they, is trying to control everything, including the body, even the health care. And you know when they try to control the health care, that's a bad thing. So the government should not be involved in the health care at all, I guess. Okay, go on. In, in your home, they want to be able to control every aspect of your family and to include every aspect of the body as well, to, you know, health care. And, and, and now, you know, kids that can't go out and get a tattoo, they're trying to say you can go out and, and alter your body, which again is... No, nobody is saying that. John Graves articulated, this is undermining the omnipotence right. and the omniscience of God because we were made in his image. And now they're saying, just like with the Tower of Babel, we're just as equal to God as anyone else. This is insane. Who is saying that? What the hell are you even talking about? Like, this makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And what? where did God come into this conversation? How did he come to any of these conclusions? This is nuts. Right. And the omniscience of God, because we were made in his image. And now they're saying, just like with the Tower of Babel, we're just as equal to God as anyone else. I love it. It's so quaint that these people believe that the Tower of Babel was a real literal event that literally really took place. When we have like skyscrapers and high rises now, like what? Oh, these people. You know... The, uh, the the story of Babel is told in Genesis, right? Yeah, Genesis 11, 1 to 9. Okay, let me tell you something about the book of Genesis. It's something called antiquity literature in Roman or in the Latin language. It's called antiquity literature. In Greek, it, it's called archaeology or no archaeology literature. I think. Anyway, um, that type of literature, antiquity literature didn't separate fact from legend, from myth, from whatever else. It, it just basically, it took anecdotes that people had, stories, campfire stories, and whatever else, and it combined it all into like one big cohesive book. Matter of fact, you know, the book of Genesis is actually like 12 different books in many places telling the exact same story. Like, the, the story of Noah is told, like, at least two different times, maybe more. The book of Genesis is not, and never was, supposed to be taken literally, or taken to be real. The book of Genesis was supposed to be antiquity literature, is antiquity literature. Anyway, these people, you know, it, none of that matters, of course, to these people. Like, it's completely irrelevant. They will do whatever it takes to convince themselves and everybody around them that this is all a hundred percent real even though we have skyscrapers today that are like thousands of feet tall way taller than the tallest building even taller than the pyramid like two three times taller than the pyramids even i think the pyramids are only 40 stories high right 40 or 400 feet is that is that it tallest pyramid is 481 feet and three inches yep 481 feet compared to our tallest building. The tallest building in NYC is Freedom Tower. It was built to replace the World Trade Center towers, and it's 1,770, uh, 1,776 feet tall. The tallest building in the world is the Burj Khalifa at 2,717 feet tall. So the Tower of Babel is very obviously a legend, a campfire story not intended to be taken real or literally. Anyway, just insane. So good. All right, Robbie, tell me about uh, your... Mm, so good. You're a believer. How, what role did your faith play in the making of this film? I mean, it's assumed that he's a believer. They didn't even have to ask that question really, right? Well, I can tell you the film would not have happened if it were not for my belief in God and my relationship with Jesus because, um, you know... Totally, totally. So, this is not an easy film to make in many respects. First of all, there's no very clear outlet to distribute a film like this because the major distributors like Netflix and all those places, they would never touch this and tell the truth to people. So you're... I mean, it's not the truth. That's the problem. They'd never touch it because it's nonsensical garbage, of course. I can't believe that I'm even like sitting here saying this. This is nuts. Get help.
problem at the outset is how are people going to watch this? You know, because it's not going to be on any of these big services. You're going to have this tiny audience and you're investing this money into it. It's serious money to make a film, you know, and I wanted to do it right because often on our side, films are not well done. They have low production values. So it doesn't matter how good the truth inside of it is. If you can't keep people's attention and tell a story in a way that is captivating, you've lost people, you know? And so if you really want to influence people, you've got to do it the right way. And so if I was thinking about it from any sort of logic, point of view, it never would have been made. And beyond that, I also had a reluctance to use my skills because I had such a negative association in my head to my previous career in Hollywood directing celebrities because I, I... Yeah, I don't even know if what he's saying is real. I don't know if he's really like if he directed celebrities or if this is just like completely fabricated. I would guess that it's completely fabricated if I had to just like place money on it or something. Broke in and made it, you know, quote unquote, very young and was nominated for all the big awards and everything. And um, I can see looking back how I was manipulated because I lacked faith at that. He was manipulated totally age in my life. I was just trying to be a success. And, you know, I got to drive a Lamborghini and, you know, have all these big celebrity friends and stuff and live in the fancy gated community and, and everything and have have all those things that people think should mean you're happy and should mean success. And that's really where I got the greatest lesson in life that none of that means anything. It's it's worthless. That's not where joy is. Joy is in your relationship with Christ. No, joy is in money. Joy is in having things that you can you know what? Let me tell you this. The idea that money does not bring happiness is a delusion granted to the poor by the rich. Absolute nonsense. Money does bring happiness. Anybody who, who tells you otherwise is lying to you or themselves or both. This guy is completely full of shit. Money does bring happiness. It does. Do you think that it's very fun sitting out on the side of a street because you don't have a fucking house to live in? Think that's very good? Think people enjoy that very much? Money brings happiness. And if you don't find your joy, you know, it's because you're, you're not working on your relationship there with, with what really matters. No, dude, I mean, I, I'm not religious. I am completely non-religious. Matter of fact, I'm an atheist, and I have plenty of joy in my life. There are all kinds of things I enjoy doing. Like, I don't even know what this dude is talking about right now. It's just completely made up. And so I reached this point where I said, you know what? I submit. I submit to whatever, you know, God wants me to do. And this kept knocking at the door. And my wife was encouraging me. I couldn't be luckier to have a godly wife like her that pushes me in that direction and away from the worldly sort of idea of success. And we trusted God. We no, I mean, I'd be happy with a Lamborghini. Shit. You think I don't want a Lamborghini? I'd love to have a Lamborghini. I live in a place that has a connected parking lot where like they'll they'll bring it like you can't go to the parking lot. A lot of the time parking lots are kind of closed off in New York City and there's like somebody that'll bring your car in because of how they pack them in. You know, I could totally. Yeah, I'd be happy to have a, uh, you know, have my guy at, at my building. I'd love it if he could pull up my Lamborghini for me. Absolutely. I'd be so down for that. That would make me happy. I would be happy in that case. Absolutely. But no, no. Yeah. The secret is Jesus. Totally. He made the movie and now, you know, we're uh, less than a month out from a release and about 50 million people have watched the movie. Wow. So that's. No, I don't know if that's true. That sounds a little overblown. 50 million people. I don't know about that. That sounds fake to me, but okay. Made it, you know, the most watched documentary of the year and one of the most watched documentaries of all time in less than a month of being out and has... You know, I, don't, again, I don't believe that. I'm sorry. You know, Elon Musk, Donald Trump Jr., Matt Walsh, um, all these people telling people this is the movie that parents and grandparents need to see. So I couldn't write this. I couldn't author this. I couldn't make this myself, and I certainly couldn't get... Oh, and it was God, right? God did it for you? Totally, totally. It to 50 million people myself. That's God. This is, this yeah. is the work of God. I told you. I knew it. I knew it was going to be all God. God did this. It was God's doing. Thank you, God. Oh, he's so nice. Isn't God great? God did it. And so that's it's uh, this wouldn't be happening without without my relationship with God. Yeah. All right, Robbie, I have one last question before we move on to the next topic. 
how do you di how did you do this with your own children? Do you, are, were your children aware of this? Uh, did you talk to them about this film as you were making it? Yeah, you know, my kids are warriors. We, we really believe in communicating really well with your kids about uh, these subjects because if you don't... Oh, they believe in communicating with their kids. Isn't that interesting? Because just a few minutes ago, he said, kids don't communicate with their parents. You know that. And if they're communicating with teachers at school, then, then they're getting the wrong information. God, dude, get help for real. I really want those dragon claws. I want 42,000 points in this game. I don't like the game isn't that fun really exactly. Not a huge fan of it, but I want the I want those dragon claws. You don't do it then you're trusting some teacher or some outsider to teach them these things so we teach it to them in age appropriate ways and stuff but like our oldest is 15 and then we've got an 11 year old and a seven year old and um so each one of them sort of at a different level understood what was going on but like say our son you know he is an expert at graphic design so this logo behind me uh, for the war on children actually he he made so like he's he's okay that's cool 15 is that what he said 15 years old Proof that 15-year-olds can have their own identities and that they're intelligent, thinking, acting beings of their own, uh, in their own right. Proof that 15-year-olds are competent, not fully adults yet. They still have a lot to learn. They, you know, they got to grow and everything else. Got to, they're still not fully mentally mature, but people underestimate 15-year-olds like a lot. And it, it's kind of sad. It's ridiculous. He's a part of it in that sense, and he even helped edit some of the appropriate interviews um, where it made sense because he has really great video skills. So we are all part of that type of family where we all kind of find ways to contribute different ways, right. um, and they couldn't be prouder, and they're, they're just awesome. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure, that's cool. Sounds like he has a good relationship with his kid, but I wonder what would happen if his kid didn't believe the same way that he did. Wonder what would happen if his kid had his own identity. Now, his kid may believe he has his own identity, but he absolutely doesn't. He has picked up his dad's identity without, you know, beyond a uh, reasonable doubt. He has his dad's identity nearly identical. I'm sure of it. And it's honestly kind of a crying shame that, that, that these kids can't, like, be who they are and, and have their own thing going on, be their own person. This guy absolutely brainwashed children into believing what he wanted them to believe. It's just disgusting. So good to hear. See, you can do this. You can talk to your kids. You can talk to your grandkids. Now they're encouraging people to talk to their kids. Great. Totally. You just got to get strong and do it. All right. So it's impossible, really, as we, we're going to keep going down this vein with our kids. But, you know, we grew up with Disney. And it's impossible to discuss a war on children without talking about the extreme left turn that Disney has made. And oh, my God. Disney did not take an extreme left turn. Come on, people. These, see, here's the problem. These people took an extreme right turn. I know plenty of billionaires who aren't happy, so got to disagree with you there. Relationships with other people who truly makes people happy. Oh, yes. Relationships with other people make you happy as well. But money... You think money doesn't bring happiness? I'm sorry. That's a hard disagree there, buckaroo. I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. Money brings happiness. The idea that money does not bring happiness is a delusion granted to the poor by the rich. Anyway, it is propaganda that is meant to make the poor happy with their lot in life. Yes, family brings happiness. So does money. In fact, money brings more happiness because you can build a family <laughs> like a lot easier and you can hold a family together if you have money. If you have a big house, you can get your family, you know, you can have them have their own room or whatever. Like there are all kinds of options that open up to you that are not open to people with no money. So the, the whole idea about money not bringing happiness, I simply reject it. In recent years, the turn looks to be forcing some changes. Investor Nelson Pels and former Disney CFO Jay Rasolo are mounting a huge campaign for a place on the Disney board so that they can right the ship. Something's wrong at Disney. Imagine that. 
Yeah, I, I have no idea what he's talking about here. Damn it. I was really hoping to get to that thing, but apparently I can't. That's frustrating. Here's what they had to say. I have tremendous confidence in Jay. I can't wait to work with him on the board because he knows this company. He served this company when this company was winning. This company hasn't won in a very long time. Um, what? Disney hasn't won in a long time? There was a very recent time, I'm not sure when it was, like a few months ago, when literally every single movie in the movie theaters in New York City were Disney films. The Avengers, Star Wars, uh, The Lion King, Broadway play, and a whole bunch of other Broadway play. Like, Disney monopolizes, monopolizes everything. You think Disney's not winning? No, Disney is ruthless and insane and, and insanely powerful, additionally. So, yeah, I don't want to hear it. It's just completely made up. Something's broken in the creation of creative content. I think from the very start, back in the 30s, when Walt created the first feature animated film, it started the Disney flywheel. In fact, Walt invented the Disney flywheel, that you could take something that pleased people in a movie theater, make it into consumer products, ultimately put it into Disneyland as rides and attractions. Animation is... Yeah, I'm not sure what, what he's talking about, but great, sure. So key to the Walt Disney Company, so key to the success and the running of the flywheel, that to imagine that the Walt Disney Company has lost its iconic status in animation today is almost unbelievable and personally um, uh, it really affects me because this is how we created success when I was at the company. All right, so things are not so good at Disney. Uh, it's worth noting, uh, I just saw this yesterday. Things are not so good at Disney, he says. No, they seem fine at Disney. That in the run up to the boardroom showdown that's imminent, guess what Bob Iger did? Disney CEO Bob Iger sold off approximately 80% of his Disney stock. John, what could be going on there? <laughs> Maybe he wants to retire. Maybe he wanted to liquidate so that he could, you know, diversify. There are a billion possibilities. Multiple things contribute to happiness. There is not one overarching factor responsible for human happiness. Money's a huge one, though. Yeah, absolutely. And, and in addition to that, it's nearly impossible, nearly impossible to be happy without money. I will, I will take that step. The less money you have, the less happy you are with deprecating returns. So after, I don't know what it is now, but the last study I saw was like, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. So it's certainly different now. But at the time, the deprecating returns started at about uh, $70,000 a year. Uh, when you started making more than 70000 a year, you were less happy. And the reason for that is because people in your life started kind of pestering you for money and, you know, only valuing you for money's sake and things like that. Or And it didn't add any additional value. Like, it didn't make you any happier to have more than, like, that amount than to just be able to like live your life, survive and, and be fine and, and get what you want, you know, that, that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, money does have diminishing returns. I will give you that, but not having money, you have no clue how unhappy that may. Well, you, you might, the, I mean, it depends on who's listening right now. Listener might know how absolutely horrifically like unhappy it, you are to not have money, how ugly and brutal life is without money. You might know. I, I certainly know what it's like to not have money. You wake up every morning after having a stress dream and you're, you're fucking sick. You feel like vomiting every morning because of the shit that you know that you're going to have to face that day. You wake up every morning knowing you're going to have to go to that goddamn fucking store again. Just like yesterday morning, I have to go to that stupid fucking store and help dumbass customers 
who don't have any clue what it's like to be me have no clue how they're making my life a living nightmare and are dumb as dog shit. Like the average customer at like Burger King is the stupidest person on planet earth. Practically. It's insane sometimes how stupid these people are. And I have to put up with that shit, you know, every fucking day. And not only do I have to put up with it every fucking day of my life, not only am I so sick of seeing that building one more fucking time, but I have to work sometimes 10, 15 hours a day. Hell, I worked 20 hours one day, 20 hours, because the poor son of a bitch who was supposed to come in and work his shift, he didn't come in. He couldn't. He was too sick or he pretended to be, understandably, because the job fucking sucks. If you think that money does not bring happiness, you're simply incorrect, good sir. Money brings happiness. It absolutely does. I, I, I'm sure I don't even need to like explain to people how deeply unhappy I was to not have money. They're like, e even now, you know, I, I don't have, I'm not rich. I'm just living my life trying to make it through one day at a time. I don't have like savings or whatever. This book is paying for itself. This book that I'm writing, I'm doing everything I can to like get enough sales so that I can do the next step so that I can have the cover art made so that I can have uh, copies printed so I can you know, have money for shipping and things. And, I, and I'm really, really close. I'm within just like a few hundred dollars, a few orders of having enough money for the book to cover itself. I mean, I have enough money in my bank account that I, I, I could and I will cover it if I need to, the extra. But I need money just to live. Everybody needs money just to live. And if you don't have money, even a modest amount, you're going to be miserable. Money brings happiness. I will die on this hill. Money brings happiness. Anyway, that's, that's my position on it. Um, tell me what you guys think. Am I wrong? Some of the best songs ever written are about being poor and working shit jobs. Yeah, some of the best songs ever written. You know why? Because suddenly these people are, you know, not so unhappy anymore. Because they wrote a song that went viral, made a ton of fucking money for them. And now they can, like, live it up and do whatever they want. And good for them. We should be able to do that. Everybody should be able to just live their life and not have to worry about whether they're going to lose their house. They're, they shouldn't have to worry about being so goddamn fucking sick of seeing that stupid fucking store that stupid fucking drive through window one more goddamn day of their life that it like if they have to i mean i'm this is i'm just trying to portray this as it is okay i this is graphic but i want people to understand i, I there are rich people in my audience that, that may not understand this is for you guys if I have to see that storefront one more day in my fucking life, I'm going to slip my wrists. That's how much I wanted to get out of that fucking job. And guess what? I did get out of that job. I got out of that job. That was Burger King. I got out of Burger King only to go work at IHOP, which is even worse. Because I was standing there one night just doing my job as I you know, usually do. I was a dishwasher there. I was bussing tables, washing dishes. And a woman in the back starts screaming, you know, it, like one of my uh, co-workers. And I, I walk in, I see what's going on. There are maggots crawling out of the prep sink. And uh, we closed the store instantly. You know, the, the people there, like the boss, he was like, yeah, we're, we can't like serve food here right now. This needs to be dealt with. I stayed. We continued to work and find the issues figure out some way to like resolve this problem and we found like mold behind the like the prep freezer or whatever it was called you know it, it was filthy so we wrote a letter to the general manager who was working the next morning we explained what happened we said 
this has to be dealt with before you can open the store. You can't open it like this. Like we, we need to come in, we need to fix it. And I signed my name to it. A couple other people signed their names to it. The dude that wrote it did, you know, he opened the store that morning and fired everybody who signed the letter, me included. That's the kind of shit you got to deal with when you're poor. When you're broke as dog shit. That's the kind of shit you deal with. So I don't want to hear any more talk about money not bringing happiness. Money brings happiness, trust me. There was a point in time when I lived in West Virginia and I lived in this like this little house that didn't like it. You know, I it, it, rent wasn't that much. My costs were really low because I didn't have enough money to cover anything. So I was just really careful with everything that I spent. And all of a sudden, YouTube just exploded like like mad. And I was making like mad money out of nowhere. Of course, YouTube fluctuates, goes up and down. It changes, it modifies, you know, and I'm, I don't have savings now. I'm not rich now. But for that brief moment in time, I was. I was rich and I was happy. Now, am I happy with my kid? Absolutely. I love my kid to death. I'd do anything for her. And I love my wife, too, more than anything or anybody. And, you know, I give up every penny that I own to be with them. I absolutely would. I would live on the street if it meant that I got to live with them. But it's not a dichotomy. I don't have to be poor and have a family or, you know, have a family and be poor. It's not how it works. You can have both. Money brings happiness, people. Anyway, I hope I've made my point with this. I know I got, it, you know, I went on a little bit of a tangent there, but I just want, like, people disagreeing with me in here about this. The idea that money doesn't bring happiness is a delusion granted to the poor by the rich. It's fake. It's bullshit. It does bring happiness. Anyway, let's keep listening. <laughs> you know, it's funny because you asked a question earlier, and family is critical. We talked about Satan, and Satan, uh, if you look at Moses and Jesus, he went after the young. He went after the, the children. But there's another... Yep, yep, God's, or uh, Satan's going after the children, totally, absolutely. Evil at work here that Jesus talks about in the New Testament. He says, you can't serve God and mammon, or wealth. And a lot of these people, the money people come in behind this, it becomes, oh, it's fashionable. We're going to have to have money. We've got to do the whole LGBT. we got to go in that whole direction. But money also pulls them back or reins them back when they start plummeting and losing it. They were a family-friendly organization. I, what, talking about Disney, I guess? Look, Disney has always been and remains today a predatory company who takes advantage of its workers. All that shit that I just described about what it's like to live broke as dog shit. Yeah, uh, Disney hires employees who have to live like that. That's part of the Disney way, living life like that. So I don't want to hear any of this nonsense. Oh, Disney used to be a good company and now it's a woke company. No. Disney has always been a predatory company who would do whatever it took to make a dollar. And they're only making movies the way they are to make money. That's why they're doing it. They want to make money. Which is fine. That's what companies are about. But, you you know, you have to place regulations in to make sure they treat their employees right, to make sure that everybody's taken care of and that the wealth distribution is not completely off the scales. Like, uh, what's the average lowest paid worker? What, what is he receiving compared to what the highest paid worker is receiving? Disney CEO to lowest paid worker worker ratio. This is a real ratio that exists. Iger is earning 500 times the salary of his median worker. That's median worker, not lowest paid, but median. So like most of the people at the company are making 500 times. That's entirely too much. The CEO should not be making 500 times what the median worker is. That That's not even considering what the lowest paid worker makes. We haven't even addressed that one yet. I, I'm talking mascots, you know, people who stand out in the the heat for hours at a time in those 
fucking outfits, the stupid Mickey Mouse outfits. They stand out there, take pictures with kids and shit for 8, 10, 12 hours a day in 90 degree weather. Ooh, yeah, that's really nice of you to give them little ice packs to put inside the suit. Wow. Made their life slightly less intolerable. But I just about guarantee you that the people at Disney, the the lowest paid workers, they're probably thinking exactly the same shit that I was thinking before. I would rather cut my wrists than set foot in this stupid fucking place or even look at that building one more time. One more time. So anyway, yeah, Disney is about money. It's always been about money. And these people here that we're, we're listening to, that we're looking at, people that are talking right now, they're filthy rich, these people are. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. Might be billions of dollars between all of them combined, between everybody on this show. I don't know. A lot of money. Have these people on here ever worked a job where they couldn't stand to see that stupid building one more day in their life? Have they ever done that before? Have they ever had to work a job like that before? And if they have, has it been recent? Is it something that they can even remember? It's okay, Owen. I may not be rich, but the money for my disability keeps bills paid. That makes me happy. Treats for the feline overlords, hail bast. I appreciate that, Nericle. That is the shit. You know what? A little bit of money can make people happy. Having enough can make people happy. But the problem is most people don't have enough in America. You know, what is it? 40% of the country or something is um, a $400 emergency away from like financial ruin or something. I don't remember what the, what the number is or like what the, the statistic is. But this is an unacceptable situation. You know what? I, in my opinion, I think that the people who have the most intolerable jobs should be paid the most. If you're a Burger King employee, you should be paid more than Bob Iger. Bob Iger has a fantastic job. He, I, I can't imagine that he has suffered a day in his fucking life. Does he, does he know what it means to suffer, to be unhappy? Does he know the meaning of the term? I doubt it. Anyway, um, it's not really like that for me anymore where like I wake up and I just like I want to vomit because there's so much stress in my life. Not like that anymore. Used to be. I, I was so sick of seeing that building one more time, one more day of my life that I would do anything to not have to deal with it anymore. But luckily, YouTube is a job that I truly deeply enjoy. It's a lot of work. I work like 80 hours a week at least. It's a lot of work, but it's work I like. So I'll take it, you know? It's, it's better than nearly anybody else in this economy because I enjoy it. Even if I was making almost nothing, even if I was making like no money practically, it would, it would still be worth it because I enjoy this job so much. I enjoy writing. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy hanging out. I like playing games with people and, and chatting and doing whatever. It's fun. It's good. And as long as you're doing something you love, you'll never work another day in your life. The people who are doing things that they don't love are the ones that should be paid more. Anyway, that's just my take. Tell me what you think about it. Teachers should be paid better than engineers like me. They go through so much. Some cash for the kitty treats jar. Thank you so much, Lizard. I appreciate that. And yeah, 100%. You know, I was a software engineer and I, I made, I don't know, well, I started out making 40000 a year. And that was like, oh my God, I make so much money right now. It's crazy. I Coming up with all these plans, what I was going to do with my 40000 a year, I buy a house and all this other stuff. Turns out 40000 a year does not stretch as far as I thought it would. But, you know, either way, teachers make like, what, 32000 a year, right? They make way less than the average, certainly the average software engineer. And they should make more. So, yeah, totally agree with you on that one. Anyway, I'm off my, I'm off my high horse now. 
in the entertainment world. Not, not every entertainment world is, obviously, but they were, and they literally cut their kneecaps out from underneath them. They literally went after their base of families, people trying to do some wholesome animation lessons in life, like stories often do, uh, and they've destroyed it. Now we're going to see. He's selling off his stock, Gene, I think, because he sees the handwriting on the wall. I'm about to be forced out, or this could be in for some more troubled times. Okay, these people are like reading into the situation way more than is warranted. I, I don't know why Bob Iger sold his stock. I have no idea. But what the hell are you talking about? Like, this is like conspiracy theory central right now. These people can do nothing but talk about conspiracy theories. But that is their God. So there's another God and it's the... Wait, what is their God? Money? No, money is not a god. Money is necessary to survive. And he knows that. He must know that. The idea that money doesn't bring happiness is, is you know, it's, it's an idea that he's trying to spread right now. He's trying to convince everybody that money is not going to bring them happiness. They just need to give up on it. It's not worth it. Forget it. Just build family instead. You can do both government where when they get the government involved in this or they get money involved in this they they can't worship god and these other things and that's part of the dynamic that's going on here in my like nobody is worshiping any of this so like what are you even talking about you can't be a government government employee without e without being like a christian nationalist is that what he's trying to communicate like what the hell my opinion uh, it's interesting and indeed let me uh um senator colonel west a in light of this, the only way that we can change uh, what we're seeing is with our dollars. Other, mm -hmm. And I'm not saying in the natural realm. Obviously, we're going to pray mm -hmm. and stand up. But in the natural realm, we, when we vote with our dollars, it's the only thing that seems to make a, ch a difference in these corporate giants. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's how you affect them, because all of a sudden when they see in the private sector they're not making the profits, that they're losing money, uh, that's what, as John talked about, hits them the hardest. And then you start to see the course correction. So I think it's so important that the body of Christ stands up and votes their values, but also practices their values. And they do not support these companies or these entities, being the cell phone companies, entertainment, what have you, that promotes those things that go against their fundamental beliefs and, and again, their values. And so, you know, I, I don't think that I want to take my two little grandsons down to Disney right now unless they change. Uh, I'd rather take, let them just go to a water park and have a lot of fun and maybe Universal, you know, my oldest grandson likes Spider-Man, but yeah, I, I thought Universal is owned by Disney. No, is that not accurate? When you have seen how they have changed characters in the Disney movies and try to make the characters align with society, and I will tell you, that's the exact same problem we have in our military. That's why we don't have young men and women wanting to. Oh, give me a break, dude. To join our military because they're aligning our military with society. It's, it's, it was not supposed to be that way. So the ideological agenda of the left is really starting to backfire against them. But still, we've got to go out and vote here in this 2024 as well. Complete fabricated nonsense. Like these people live in a fantasy where they are the persecuted minority in every situation. You know, these people who have never had a work a real day in their lives sure i suppose technically they're working right now in the most technical sense but not really working right like not really they have no idea what it's like to actually really work that's true elections have consequences uh all right robbie i'll give you a chance to kind of wrap it up and tell us how we can go see the film yeah, you know, the future belongs to independent creators, not big old corporations like Disney that bow to the woke mob. So show those companies that independent content creation that is doing it right is worthwhile and go to the war on children dot com. There's all different types of ways to buy or gift the movie to that person in your life who does. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now he's just shouting out his his insane movie about how children are like being exploited or whatever when they're simply not. Jesus Christ, dude. Get a life. Like, come back to reality. Was he ever in reality? I'm not convinced. My God, man. Get help. Doesn't believe all this stuff is going on. There's a gifted button, which was very popular with Sound of Freedom to wake people up. And we hope you use that to wake up those people in your life because we have an opportunity here to continue to make this. Dude, are you kidding me? I just went off of this stupid ride. My God.
movement to awaken people so that they take a stand. No politician is going to come save us, not even President Trump. No politician is responsible to save us. Oh, boy, that is like risky business to make a claim like that, that Trump is not going to save us. That is I don't know that that's approved by the uh, the Flashpoint crew. Trump is not coming to save us, guys. We've got to do it ourselves. Ooh. Okay. It's up to us as parents and grandparents to save our communities, ourselves. That's why this isn't just infotainment. We document freedomforever.us. Sign up for the email list. You will get a parenting revolution manual that gives you all of these different action items you can do in your community to protect the kids from this harmful content and ideology. Okay, there's no harmful content or ideology happening here. It's just made up. Jeez. I, that's great. And I, lo I love it that you brought that up because that's what we need to do. All right, we're going to take a break. But before we do, I know Mike Lindell is already with us. Joe, I want to get Mike. Oh, my God. Is Mike Lindell next? Holy Christ on a cracker, bro. Anyway, I, it sounds like this is the end of this episode. Tell me what you guys think about it. It's insane to me. These people are insane. And not only that, they have no idea what it's like. They have no clue what it's really like. To be poor and do have they ever been and what's more if they were at some point do they even remember it it's like something tells me they don't they don't even remember what it's like to be broke is dog shit that you brought that up because that's what we need to do all right we're going to take a break but before we do i know mike lindell is already with us joe i want to get mike uh to weigh in here mike you've seen what we've talked about when it comes to the american family this is the battle we're looking at isn't it Absolutely. Um, you know, the, uh, back in the, you know, back when I spoke from the White House there on the Rose Garden, I said, you know, the family units, we need to get back with our family, get back to God, uh, reading our Bibles. And dude, does Mike Lindell even have family left after everything he's done? You know, the, the I come from a divorced family back in that. Oh, there, there's your answer. No, no, he doesn't. Comes from a divorced family, he says. Oh, my God, dude the late 60s when divorces weren't common i was the only kid from a from a uh, a divorced family and i'll tell you the family unit is so important and that's what they've tried to destroy and uh they did a poll in a prison who is they they tried to destroy what exactly in kansas they said how many how many of the inmates in there where both parents got married uh planned their child had their child and the, were still married when the uh the felon was in the prison they zero percent uh, I've heard him say this before. I don't actually know if this is true or not, that uh, they did this study, the scientists did, that determined it, that, or that found that inmates uh, almost, what, apparent, according to Mike Lindell at least, inmates had 0% um, du dual family homes or whatever. Wow. Uh, just goes to show you how important that is to children, to the family unit. Uh, so good. All right, Mike, we're going to come back after the break. And Again, I don't know if it's even true, like the, the, um, the statistic that he cites here. This could be completely made up, probably is, for all I know. Who knows? But, um, you know, Mike Lindell likes making things up on the regular, so. Mike's got some news for us about paper ballots. But, Robbie, thanks for coming by. Flashpoint, uh, go see. Oh, we're, you you kidding me? They're not going to give us a, a little taste of Lindell, even a little taste. Come on, give me something more than that. Dude is absolutely unglued from reality. You, you can't tell me you couldn't have given me a little unglued from reality. Just a little bit. Come on, something. See the film, everybody. And Robbie, we need to get you back on uh, Flashpoint. Thanks for coming by. Well, I'll tell you, here's your incentive to come back and listen to the nutter buttery of Mike Lindell. On the next episode, Lindell, we're going to be talking about Lindell, apparently. Like, he's part of the, uh, the episode next time around or whatever. So, check it out. It's going to be pretty interesting. And let me know what you think about these Nutter Butters in the comments.